throughout my life and especially as I've gotten older. I've used music as a tool to help me deal with life difficulties, especially grief. There are two songs in particular I found to have a lot of utility for me in the past when I was grieving, and I was most recently thinking about them when our cat died in December. I laid out my thoughts for this video in a Twitter thread in January, just as like an outline. So as a disclaimer, I am self-plagiarizing a little by exploring those same ideas I already articulated there in this video. I'm trying to work out doing somewhat shorter, more direct video essays that aren't just reviews as well. So this is an experiment in that direction. Two songs I've been drawn to again and again that have helped me a lot when I'm grieving and when I'm sad and on rough anniversaries or holidays, and that may be useful for you if you are grieving are Store by The Mountain Goats and Return by OK Go. Two quick notes are that I was originally going to include Ocean Breathe Salty by Modest Mouse until I found out that Isaac Brock of Modest Mouse was accused of rape in 1999. And although I think the allegation was withdrawn, I take any accusations like that seriously. And a withdrawal doesn't mean nothing happened, and I don't want to platform and analyze music by a potential rapist. Him being a potential rapist doesn't change the value I got out of the song before I knew about it, the value I found in using that song as a tool to help mitigate and process my own grief. But I'm also not a why can't you separate the art from the artist person, and it's important for me to be upfront about the background of what I expose my audience to. I was originally going to include the song anyway with a disclaimer, but I was not enjoying writing about it, so I just cut it. You can see my thoughts and what I got out of the song in my Twitter thread, which I'll link in the description, and you can listen to the song for yourself. My second note is that the Grammy version of Hey Mama by Kanye West is a song that I used to listen to a lot when I was thinking about death and grief as well. It's a version of a song where he changed the lyrics following his mother's death, and it makes an already beautiful song even more meaningful, though that meaning came from a tragedy. But I don't even want to talk about Kanye and how weird and complicated his whole persona, his whole deal is now. And Fake Friends 2 is still down because of a tiny clip of a Kanye West song, and I don't want to tempt fate again. So I'm not going to include any of that song again. You can find it. You can listen to it for yourself. So, Store by the Mountain Goats, also known as Isle, I think, is about seeing a vision of a dead friend while passed out on the floor of a supermarket. In the five minutes were the last time that I had when I was passed out on the supermarket floor I saw you at the head of a heavenly chorus and I heard your voice ringing all through the storm. In the five minutes when my broadcast got preempted, I saw you touch down, you were no longer dead, I was happy to see you, I had lots of questions, and I put my hand to the wound in your head. Store is a gutting portrait of grief's surreality. I saw you with a smile on your radiant face Amidst all of the cans and the glass and the chrome And all the blood All of that blood All of that warm blood Darnielle talks about writing Store while thinking of dead friends, and calls it terribly gory, disturbing, and an anti-epiphany. I think I wrote this while I was working on Queer's Gambit stuff and thinking a lot about dead friends, um, as you do. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a terribly gory song, and it's kind of uh, disturbing to me to think about this guy having this anti-epiphany walking up and down the aisles of the High V in Iowa, all brightly lit. In the middle of the afternoon. I've had so many dreams about dead loved ones, and sometimes they'll be like nothing ever happened, like a scene from earlier in my life. Sometimes it'll feel wrong, and I'll be overwhelmed with dread, and the person will be there, and I know that they're gonna die, and I get scared, and I don't know what to do. Or sometimes I'm filled with righteous anger at the person for abandoning me by dying, which of course is not reasonable, but you can't control your emotions and grief dreams. And then sometimes there's an experience like Store, which is surreal and otherworldly, and mixes wonder and love with the reality of death. And you get a brief, suspended moment where those concepts can coexist without collapse. I love this segment in particular. It's some of the best and most affecting songwriting I've ever heard. And in those five minutes, my signal was jammed, and the frequencies that I received were so pure that I almost believed that the sight of the wound in your skull was a thing that my heart could endure. From you. So for me, stories about the surreality of grief, the subconscious, and how you can only ever reconcile how much love you had for a person with how brutal and horrible their death was in suspended, fragile, unreal moments. Return by OK Go is, on the other hand, very much about waking grief, and it's about friend of the band Timory Hyde dying on her 22nd birthday. 
Here's Damien Kulash talking about it. It's songs about my friend Timory, Timory Hyde. She was one of my closest friends in college and on her 22nd birthday, she died. Uh, she was, we, she was at a, at a, a house party and um, lost her balance when someone gave her a hug and they fell through a window, three stories, and she died. Even if you have zero context going into the song, it's still easy to tell that it's a song about death and about grief. But when you know how the person they're talking about died, you can see the lyrics about her death are very literal. Which makes them so much more blunt and brutal. All thick and dull, all gravel and glass. It's about her corpse. About her sudden violent death where her body went flat. Not just a pulse flatlining, but literally going flat. It's not as evident without that extra context, but it's just as brutal of a song as Store is. With Darnielle singing about the wound with all of the blood. All, the blood. all of the blood. OK Go is in my experience seen as a gimmick band, but I'm a pretty big fan of theirs, and some of their songs are very dense and very touching. What I connected to a lot while listening to Return is Kulash's own experience of grief dulling over time, which led to frustration and self-loathing. The sense of shame that comes along with the dulling of mourning. The diffusion of memory of someone you loved as self-preservation. I found myself a few years later um, frustrated with myself that I couldn't, um, I couldn't recall her, her, the, her face. Could, I, I still um, missed her, but I, but it had become a much more diffuse memory, um, and. There's a sense of shame that comes along with um, with with the dulling of of mourning. You know, when 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 you move on with life and you feel almost guilty about it. That's what that sounds about. So on top of the obvious context of being frustrated that someone died so young and wanting them to return and live and grow old and being angry at how unfair it is that they didn't. There's the self hatred over living and compartmentalizing so that the grief isn't debilitating. And I've never seen that talked about before in media. Maybe, you know, in a war movie, there's like PTSD and survivor's guilt, but the, the years long process of grief and how it changes and how your feelings about it change. This is the first time I personally have ever seen it explored with that level of honesty and that level of self-loathing. Like not only did you survive when this person didn't, but how dare you get over them? Which is uh, obviously that's a very unhealthy, very dangerous way to look at grief, but it also seems like something very natural that a lot of people deal with. With those earlier caveats, you could still check out Hey Mama and Ocean Breathe Salty if you're looking for music that deals with grief and sharply reflects very specific real life experiences with death, the same way that Store and Return do. Although, lucky for me, Store and Return were my favorite songs out of the four anyway. So many songs about death, especially weepy, tearjerker country music, portray it in a poeticized and romanticized and cathartic sense, where yeah, you're probably gonna cry, but you feel kinda good and warm at the end. And store and return do not tie up grief and death so neatly and cleanly and warmly. Not that there aren't also great country songs about death. I'm just talking about Roses for Mama or The Christmas Shoes or Almost Home or etc. And I'm not complaining about songs that feature the afterlife either. I certainly don't think that that's mutually exclusive with a great grief song. John Darnielle is a very religious man and he could still write a heart-wrenching anti-epiphany song about a bloody death vision in a supermarket. But yeah, here was something shorter and more direct and simpler than a lot of my videos. Just about two songs that were written from very dark places that have given me a lot of comfort. I have very specific memories of listening to one or both of those songs on the birthday of someone who died a long time ago. Or when suddenly finding out someone I used to be friends with had just died. I'd be happy to hear about any similar songs you found comfort in in the comment section. 
Also, it's not a song and it is very warm and sweet, but All About My Dog Marimo, the Japanese short film, is my favorite short film about grief. And it's a tearjerker dead pet video that avoids being hokey or saccharine. And it's so sweet and so beautiful, and I've watched it many, many times and would definitely recommend it. Links to all the stuff that I talked about in the description. A lot of the clips I use of the live performance of Store are from a Pace Magazine recording, which I'll make sure to link. It's really good. There's some like glitches in the video, but it's still a very, very good Mountain Goats performance. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I also have a Kofi, and thank you for watching.